Hi guys, welcome back, or should I say welcome because it's more than likely you've never seen one of my videos before. If we've never met, my name is Allison and this is my channel. I mostly do videos about plant related things like house plants and gardening. Um, and I also do videos about art, which is one of my other pursuits. So today I'm going to be showing you pretty much all of my house plants. Some of my house plants have actually ended up moving outside. Um, most of them are in this room though, except for a few. Um, I'm gonna pretend I didn't clean this room just to make it look nice for this video. Um, the places in other parts of the house, however, I did not clean, so please don't judge me. Um, yeah, all right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the plants. Okay, so I'm gonna start on this side of the room because um, there isn't quite as much to look at, so we're just gonna start here and then move around the room this way. Um, so I have my two fiddly figs. Um, I think overall they're doing fairly well. A lot of this damage is from when I got it from uh, from Costco. Let me check on that. Is that a melee bug? No, that's something else. I don't know what that is. Um, yeah, this actually a friend got me from Costco for $25 and it was pretty much as big as it is now. It's only grown like, I don't know, the top few inches of leaves since I've had it, um, which you can mostly tell because the ones that, it, you know, the damaged ones are mostly from when it was from Costco and then most of the newer leaves don't have as much damage on there. They look fresh like this. Um, these are actually some new leaves and I gotta say I love the feeling when a fiddly fig puts out a fresh leaf. Like it just feels so young. Like I don't know how else to describe it. Um, so there's that one. They're both on rolling carts just so that you know if it's not in a good spot I can easily move them around just because they're a little bit bigger. This one I got from Home Depot. I actually got it Gosh, I think it was only like a foot tall. I think it was this tall. And it's grown all that since I've had it. Um, it. It's seen better days. It's definitely seen better days. I think most recently, I accidentally put it in too high light. And so it got leaf burn right here. Like I had it right over here next to the humidifier. Um, but I just think, cause I should have stated this at the beginning of the video, but this is a southwest facing window. So it actually gets a really intense light in the afternoon. So I just think it was too much for it to handle. It got leaf burn right here. And the other one that was right here slowly shriveled up and it just fell off recently. Like that's the, that's the scar from where it fell off. But we do have a new leaf coming out. So I'm really excited about that. I've been trying to be more on top of fertilizing this year. Um, in years past, I've just not done very well with it, but I kind of put together an Excel sheet. Um, I got the idea from Summer Rain Oaks, um, and I put one together that kind of like has a rough schedule for fertilizing, which, I don't know, I gotta double check it, because I think I'm supposed to be fertilizing these twice a month, so they might be due for another fertilizing. Um, anywho. Moving on here, I have my super janky terrarium set up. And right in here, let's see, let's pop the top of this thing. So, um, this is basically all of my plants that require higher humidity. The only thing is, a lot of these plants, I didn't get them in here fast enough. So I'm pretty sure most of them were too far gone. Um, some of them did survive though. This Begonia Pavania, almost didn't survive before I got it in here. Like, it was about to die. Let's see if I can get the blue shift on it. I got this from Logies, which apparently they're really hard to get from Logies. They sell out really quickly, so I guess I just managed to find it at the right time. I don't think the light is right for the blue shift here. But anyways, when I can get the right lighting, then it does um, have blue highlights when uh, when the light hits it right. Right here I have a Hoya Embricata and I'm pretty sure it's about to die. Uh, I'm really hoping it doesn't. 
but it might. Um, it really does require some pretty high humidity and I just don't think I was giving it to it. And uh, then I think I might have given it too much humidity. Like this whole terrarium situation is pretty experimental. And then, yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm really sad about it because I paid $39 for it and I killed it almost immediately. And that makes me sad. I really had like a vision of it like latching onto this um, Choya branch, this Choya cactus branch. But those dreams are dashed. Um, this is another one that makes me sad. Most of these in here I paid a decent amount of money for and I've killed them and it makes me sad. This is a pink princess. I'm just hoping it survives at this point. This used to have like four really healthy leaves and like good roots and stuff. And then I put it in a, um, like a cash pot and just accidentally overwatered it. And it just didn't have a strong enough root system to actually take up the amount of water I gave it. So it was sitting in water too long and it got started to get root rot. So I had to go in and, you know, trim the roots. The, some foliage died, the pink parts died. And then it has this new leaf. Let me see if I can zoom in on it. Hello. Right here. It has this new leaf. And it's, uh, it's, it's dead. Yep. Died before I could even get it out the gate. It's been like a pregnant leaf for, gosh, I don't know, six months, pretty much since I've had it. And uh, has not, come to anything. That sucks. Monstera Anazoniae, which uh, I'm pretty sure I'm slowly killing. Uh, I think I need to take this out because when things start to mold like this, it usually means that they are dead. So I'm just holding on to these in hopes that like the green parts produce some growth from the nodes basically. So we'll see about that. This is a Begonia Maculata. It has produced, oh yeah. That's great. <laughs> it produced leaf and then I just took it off right now. Look at me screwing up in real time. Some people think I'm really good with plants and jokes on them. Um, this is a Christia Ocordata. I had a bunch of seedlings of this and I accidentally forgot to water it. And uh, like a whole, like, I don't know, 10 seedlings died, which sucks. That one has great veining. Let's look at that. Let me see if I can zoom in on that. Oh gosh. <laughs> I'm gonna like kill all my plants by the end of this tour, I swear. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's just gently now. There's the veining. Let's hope that this is alive by the next plant tour. Pray for the Christia, okay? Um, all right. So right here we got a goldfish plant. And uh, I, I think the trick with this one was just giving it higher humidity. I put it in a spot where it wasn't getting high enough humidity, but it got like pretty good amount of light. And it started to slowly die, like half the plant died. And then I put it over here in the tank and it started getting more humidity and I don't know, the parts that were already dying like kicked the bucket and the rest um, seems to be doing pretty good. Now it seems to be uh, really going somewhere. Oh and that's my humidity gauge that I got on Amazon. I don't know if it's super accurate but I think it's probably in the ballpark. And then this is how I keep the humidity up. I got this idea from Harley G. She recently did a video about her propagation box um, and she basically just puts a jar of water in the propagation box and it creates humidity. So I decided to do basically the same thing. Um, before I was just putting water in the bottom and I think it was probably just like, I don't know, probably wasn't great for the plants. Like I'll still do that every now and then to water them. I mean, eventually I'd like to turn this into a real terrarium, but we're not there yet. Um, what was I gonna say? 
Uh, yeah, I was putting water in the bottom of this and that seemed to work all right. And then my husband put a humidifier in the corner of the tank and I think that was just too much. And then uh, I think I've landed on this. So we'll see how this goes. I've only had this in here for a couple days. All right, let's close this puppy back up before I kill all my plants. And I don't have this like completely sealed up by the way, um, just cause I think that you know, that I don't think that really contributed to the plant's overall health. So I do have like sections of it kind of like, you know, not completely sealed just to allow for airflow and for some humidity to escape. Um, I think that helps. This is a ZZ Raven. I bought this online. Come on, focus. I bought this online and um, it was basically just a stem and I think I paid with shipping and everything about $50 for this. And when I found out it takes about a year to propagate a ZZ Raven, I was really sad. So I trimmed some leaves off of it and I also trimmed the stem a little back a little more and propagated the stem. So it's been a full year and it's finally putting on fresh growth. And I'm so excited. Just look at that little baby. So I'm really excited about that because finally I'm getting a full plant from that. And this is one of the leaves that I propagated. I don't know if you can see, but the, the leaf right there, the mother leaf is starting to die off and it finally produced this stem not too long ago. Um, just like a little baby stem. I think that's a, probably about as big as it's gonna get. I'm not sure. But um, either way, I'm excited. So that is on its way. This is an oxalis that needs to be watered. Hello. This is an oxalis that needs to be watered. Um, I am a little bit disappointed because I thought this was going to be a purple oxalis. And it wasn't, it was a green one. I mean, I guess it's not the end of the world, but uh, I did do a plant read for it, so it kind of sucked when it wasn't purple. I, I don't know, maybe I should have been more specific. I thought I was. I thought I said that I wanted purple, but you win some, you lose some. So this is some plants that I got from a plant trade. There is a, uh, gosh, what is this? Philodendron micans and a philodendron Brazil. I need to, I think, put water in this, um, but I'm propagating those. So those are still um, in the works. So they're hanging out over here. And this, shoot, was this a Snow Queen photos? I forget. Grr. Uh, it looks like it's starting to put out growth, so I think I need to um, actually pot this up into something pretty soon here. So that's pretty exciting. And then right up here, this is my variegated Hinda, well, Hoya Carnosa Compacta Variegata. And I just love this plant. Um, I, it, I actually am pretty proud of this one. Here, let me take it down from here. I'm very proud of this one because um, I actually had three plugs. I had this one and I had one right here and one right here. And you know, one was a little smaller, the other one was pretty decently sized. And like, I, don't, I just was really underwatering it. I, I assumed that because they were succulent, they didn't need that much water. I was just like top watering them like with a little bit like a week, like I would my normal succulents. Um, and I was just so severely underwatering them that the other two um, props slowly died. And I couldn't figure out what was going on. So I went on to the plant clinic subreddit on Reddit, which if you're, I don't know, even if you're more experienced with plants and you, you know, it, you always wanna try new plants. Um, and sometimes some plants tend to be a little bit more challenging, so. I find that resource to be really useful because you can post whatever issues you're having with the plant and oftentimes people are able to help you um, figure out what the issue is and how to solve it. So anyways, that's basically what happened with this plant. Um, 
So this one was on its way out. It was starting to shrivel up like the other two. And so um, I posted a picture of it on the plant clinic and they basically told me that what I should do is bottom water. So I don't know if you could see, I think it, probably this is the line, no, probably back here. I, I usually will put it in a Tupperware and I have the Tupperware over here, you'll see it in just a minute, but I usually put it in a Tupperware with about an inch of water and I just let it sit there for like a full day or maybe even two days and soak up that water. And then, you know, I'll let it hang out for a couple weeks actually and then I'll soak it again. And it actually seems to like that a lot. So I think, let's see, I think everything from here up is new growth. So I'm just really happy that I was able to figure out how to care for this plant and not kill it especially after killing the other two so yeah this is like one of my little success stories and you know it just makes me happy when I can actually take care of a plant that I wanted for so long um, and I think I'm finding that my specialty is plants that have a slightly more succulent nature so let me look at this is that okay I think it should be fine anyways so I think, yeah, that's my baby. Um, I didn't name my plants, I don't really call them by name, but Kumar is this one's name. So if you wanna say hi to Kumar, leave a comment. That's my first Hoya baby. So I'll put that back here. All right, and then this one is my second Hoya baby. This is a Hoya Publicalix Splash. And honestly, this one has been, I think, one of the easier Hoyas. It's like, well, first of all, the variegation is very nice. Some of the leaves are not quite as variegated. Some of them have come out a little more variegated. So, you know, I think it just changes from leaf to leaf, but, um, I read that this one likes to climb, so I put a trellis in here. Got like a pack of 10 of these on Amazon. And um, yeah, I don't know. I started treating it kind of similar to how I treat this one. Um, and it just, it did what it does. So it started climbing up the trellis and then it went way past the trellis and I didn't know what to do. So I hung up this uh, twine and I put it in here, through that hole, through that hole, and then it goes all the way over here. So I think when this second, you know, vine gets to be a good, you know, length and starts to grow out, I think I'm gonna attach it to this one and let it start growing that way. Um, so yeah, that's my Google Calyx. This one is the one that I'm counting on to make my house look like a jungle. Um, this one is pretty cool too. I got this one, I, I put it in a video. It was at uh, Artifacts and Artichokes. I did like a shop tour, which is probably the worst shop tour ever, but you know, I tried. Um, and I don't know how much I got it for. I probably said it in the video, maybe. But I just love, I love this plant. It's very easy to care for. It's not terribly, you know, picky. And um, it has really good sized leaves. Like you can see right here, this is my hand. That's the size of the leaf. And um, good variegation. And what else can I say? It grew really fast. Um, oh, and it tells you when it needs to be watered because the leaves start to curl up. So, that's a pretty good sign that it needs to be watered when the leaves curl. They kind of curl like back in like that. So yeah, I like that plant. It's very nice. I probably should pot it up. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I'm just gonna let it hang out here for a little while before I do that. I need to like get some bigger pots or at least clean out the pots that I have. I probably need to clean out the pots that I have. Anyways, all right, moving on. Back down here, this is just your average green 
variegated, I mean not variegated, so average green ZZ that you get at like Home Depot or whatever. Um, but this guy is growing a new stem and yeah, it's pretty happy in this pot. I had this one at work for a while and I think it just wasn't getting enough light if you can believe it. So I brought it back here and it's, it's much happier. This is a string of turtles. I bought this one on the Facebook Marketplace and it's doing really well. I think I'm gonna start propagating it since we're in the growing season. Um, and it's putting out inflorescence, like a tiny little weird, um, what's it called, flowers. It started putting those out when it was in the um, terrarium. I put it in there kind of experimentally. I don't think it necessarily like did better growth wise, but it did start to put out the inflorescence. So I'm not sure if it's because of the high humidity or if it was just like the time of year. It's got more over here. I mean, the flowers aren't anything to write home about, but it's kind of cute. Yeah. Alrighty, let me pull this one out. This is my Hoya Curtisii. When I, let me bring this into the shade so you can see a little better. Hold on. There we go. This is my Hoya Curtisii. It was not doing great when I first got it. Um, I went into this plant shop. I'm not gonna necessarily name the shop because I don't want anybody to think that they're like a bad plant shop. But um, I saw this in the plant shop and um, I wanted it, I should have got it right then, but for some reason I was just like, no, I don't want to spend the money on it. And then I was in a plant trade group on Reddit and I was asking about like good plants for, that are uncommon, that are like quick growing because I wanted to be able to do more trades. And they recommended this plant as one of the, um, like as a trading plant. And so I went back like a week later and got this one. Um, when I first went in, it was doing really well. And then the second time I went in, it wasn't doing as hot. Like there were parts that were dying and yellowing and like kind of shriveling. And I think it was just probably a matter of like maybe them forgetting to water it and probably just not getting enough light. So I don't think it was necessarily their fault. I think it was just in the plant shop for too long and wasn't just moving. There were probably much better looking Hoyas available at the time that this was like maybe the rent of the litter. But it's doing much better now. I weeded out pretty much all the pieces that were um, like dying and yeah, it's doing pretty good. I think I'm gonna try to propagate some of this. So I'm gonna look into that. Um, yeah, and see how that goes. But I just love it. It's just so cute. I almost don't want to trade it, but I know I could. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So yeah, this one lives over here for now. Here we go. Okay. All right. This is a strawberry begonia. It's not doing great. Um, I don't know, might be needing more water probably. I think I'm letting it dry out too frequently. I can't keep up with plants that need more water. I just, you know, I'm too, I don't wanna say lazy, but I feel like I'm pretty forgetful and like, I don't wanna offend anybody, but I am one of those people that pretty much does water on a schedule. Um, just cause like most of the plants I have at this point, they don't need to be watered more than once or twice a week. And that's the way that I like it. Like they need to be watered about twice a week in the growing season and then once a week during the winter for the most part. Um, and that's pretty much it. It works for me. It especially worked for me when, you know, I was working full time because like if you work full time, it's pretty tough to keep up with watering plants like just checking them all the time um you know i i live in the city and i was having to commute for like an hour to work and then an hour from work 
on top of like my eight hour day, it's like you're gone for 10 hours. So, and then you have to account for like time to get ready and then time to come home and cook. And then like by that time you're beat, you just want to go to sleep and then you have to do it all again. So anywho, that's my two second rant. Back to the plants. All right, next up is my string of hearts, Silver Glory. I love this baby. Oh my gosh. Just look at it. I can't wait for this to like really grow out and be a full plant. Like I think it's gonna happen within the year. Um, but I got this actually on eBay. Okay, so a lot of people have like the regular one where it's like the dark leaf with the light light veining and a lot of people like the variegated one which is the same thing but like with white variegation on the margins of the leaf. I didn't really like either of those. They, they didn't really appeal to me. And then one day I saw a string of hearts silver glory on Pinterest and I was like, oh, hello. And it was like this whole thing but like a really full pot of this. And like, I don't know, for some reason that just spoke to me. So I managed to find somebody who was selling cuttings of theirs on eBay and I bought like a 12 inch cutting. It had, I don't know, maybe six or seven like leaf nodes like this. And basically what I did was like, for example, right here, I chopped off and just left a little bit of the size of the stem and I put like this thing in the soil and then you just need to keep the soil moist so my method of keeping the soil moist was to um basically bottom water it so i have it in this terracotta pot and i put it in this cash pot. and then once the soil on top gets dry i put like an inch or so of water at the bottom and then it keeps the soil moist so that these babies can keep on growing um yeah, so that's been working out pretty well. I'm pretty excited about it. And yeah, okay, that's that. Um, next up is Pilea peperomioides. And I love this guy. I got this at Artifacts and Artichokes as well. And he's just so cute and perky. Um, yeah, it's doing really well for me. Um, apparently it's one of those plants that, again, you don't really need to baby it too much and it doesn't really need to be overwatered. So, um, yeah, I think me and Pylea jive really well. Um, and it's also putting out one of these pups. I have a friend who's been wanting a Pylea um, for a super long time, so once that grows out to be a decent size, I'm going to try to prop it and give it to her as a gift. Because after all, it is the friendship plant, so why not share the love? Okay, on to the other side of the computer. Okay, this is my Begonia Maculata. I got this from Moji's as well. And, oh, you know what? The Papanina I got from Steve Leaves. The other, this one I got from Moji's, so my bad. Um. This does need to be staked up. Need to like keep it upright somehow. But um, I think I just had this in way too high light. I think the leaves were starting to get burned because I had it over where I have the current, uh, the Hindu rope right now. Um, and yeah, I so I'm gonna try it over here and see if it does any better. Um, I think it will. But overall, I love this plant. And I don't know if you can tell. Well, I think the image is a little grainy, but the, the dots have like a little shimmer to them. So I always thought that that was really cool. Yeah. Anywho, 10 out of 10, would recommend. Um, well, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't say that because I'm not doing too well with this plant, but I love it. It's so cute. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna test it out over here and if it's still not going well, I think I'm gonna go to the plant reddits and ask for their help because 
I definitely don't want to lose this plant. This is one of my more, more favorites. And then right over here, we have a full ZZ Raven. So what ended up happening here was I actually had bought that stem that I have in the window and it was like 50 bucks and I found out it was gonna be a year before it would become a full plant. So I got really sad and I really wanted a full plant like right now. So I went back online and there was an even better deal on Etsy to get a full ZZ Raven for 50 bucks. So I went ahead and got this one. So basically I spent 100 bucks to get a ZZ Raven. And this was all last year when ZZ Ravens were first like becoming a thing. Um, yeah, I regret nothing to be honest. I love this plant. I think it's like just the, the you know, the drama. It's, yeah, I, you know, you know, you see it. It's gorgeous. That's all I gotta say. All right, so right over here, this is one of my pride and joys. This is um, my Hoya Latifolia. I did do a plant unboxing on this on my channel, so I'll go ahead and link that in the cards. And um, yeah, this, so this will be like a little update. I'll try to remember to also update the description on that video. Um, but anyways, yeah. So it still has all the leaves. It hasn't lost any leaves, so that's awesome. But it's also started growing, and I'm really excited. It started reaching out for something to latch onto, so I'm trying to like train it to like grab onto that. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, but I also put this cork board back here just a minute ago, so maybe I can like, you know, put a push pin in here and like help it stay upright and like grow closer to that. I don't know. But it has one. Two, three, four nodes, actually five. So I'm pretty excited for this plant to start, you know, growing out and, you know, filling out a little bit more. And then maybe next year I can propagate it and get more latifolia. So I'm really hoping that, you know, this pushes out some nice size leaves. So we'll probably do an update at the end of the season on that. This is my Posos Enjoy. Um, I don't love or hate this plant. Like, I do enjoy it. It is a perky plant. It's just that it's a little bit dramatic. <laughs> Hold on one second. Let me adjust the settings here, because... Is that better? I think so. Okay, hold on. Let me get... Let me get a better shot for you of this area now that it's not, like, super dark over here. Look at that, hello. Um, yeah, anyways, back to this plant. I like this plant because it is perky. It's just not as fast growing as most other posos, which I do realize this is a scandapsis, which, which does tend to be slower growing. Um, but it also is like just a tad dramatic, more dramatic than more other posos. But I do really like the strong variegation in this plant, which is why I keep him hanging around. Um, and I like, so I've actually bought it with this pot and this saucer, which I think was a good choice because I can use this saucer for bottom watering. I really want to switch my saucers over to these glazed ceramic ones because um, I think that's going to make bottom watering easier for my plants that are in terracotta because I do have some of these in like plastic saucers and I'm just not a fan of that look. Um, so yeah. This is a Norfolk Island Pine, which I managed to get this past winter season. Um, here in Southern California, I don't know if it surprises anybody, but they're really not that common to find in like plant shops and stuff. Um, like I never see them in Home Depots, maybe I'm tripping, I don't know. But um, yeah, I just never used to see it and then I was about to go on a camping trip and then random we went to Home Depot to buy some supplies for the camping trip and I saw this plant like at the checkout where they put all the impulse buys and I saw it from like 
50 feet away. And I was like, oh my God. And I ran over there and it was the last one, I think. And I picked it up and I asked my husband, I was like, can I get it? And he was like, yeah, all right, throw it in there. So I, I'm really digging this. I'm hoping someday it grows out to be a full tree. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, it looks very cute and very perky. Um, it started to dry out, some of the stems did, but I think um, I managed to put it in a spot. Like, I think I just had it in too high light. I had it over here, so I moved it over here. I think that helped a lot, and just being around other plants helped the ambient humidity. So, yeah. So it started putting out some fresh growth, and it's looking really good. Okay, down to the next level. We're getting down to my plants of shame area, so please don't judge me. Um, this is not a plant of shame, this is my root rack. I really enjoy epiphyllums. I wanna get some more. Um, I have some trades, I think, in the works. Um, but yeah, uh, I actually got just like two or three cuttings from a local grower. It was like, oh, I don't know, five bucks a cutting. And I snipped them up into a bunch of little sections. Um, hot tip, don't put those cuttings in any sort of direct light. Keep them in a place that does not get direct light because otherwise they will burn to a crisp and they won't be usable. Um, but yeah, and then I just stuck them in here and I water this every now and then. I think it likes to be watered a little bit more than most you know, other succulents because it is an epiphyte. So it doesn't like to be watered often, but it seems like it likes to be watered pretty deeply. And it seems to be doing pretty good. I've only had this since the winter and it's put on all this growth since then. So I think I might actually um, take some cuttings again and you know, grow it out a little bit more. Maybe some of these floppier cuttings I'll take off and you know, try to keep them going so that I can fill out this pot. Um, so yeah. All right, right here I have a peperomia, I think this is some sort of like ruby peperomia or something, I don't know. But um, as you can see, it's not doing so hot. I've never had a peperomia before, so I'm not really super well versed in what's going on, but I had it, I think, again, over there on that table in higher light, and it wasn't doing so well, so I moved it over here. Seems to be doing better. And I've been bottom watering it. I just think that this section is not doing great. Oh, hey, look at that. Yep. Okay, so uh, yeah, that part's I think dead. I can't, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm gonna figure out that situation in a second. Oh, I can't, I can't lose this one. Oh my goodness, okay. So this is another plant of shame. Um, this is a Bonnie spider plant. It's a curly spider plant. I don't like regular spider plants, but I wanted to try this one. Sorry. I don't like regular spider plants, but I wanted to try this one. Um, not doing so great with it. Uh, my friend told me that I'm probably just uh, paying too much attention to it, so I should stop looking at it. So she's probably right, and I'm gonna try to not look at it. Um, and hope that it recovers. Uh, seems to be doing pretty decently in this spot. I think it's put on some new growth. Let's see, right here and right here. I think this is new growth. Um, and then back here, that shoots new. So, you know, I think it's coming back. Like, we'll see. Stay tuned if you want to see how this plant does. And if you, or if you want to see a new kill a spider plant. Okay, now we're really getting down to the. I'm sorry, I can't look at this one. Oh my goodness. Okay, we're getting down to the true plants of shame. Um, I'm one of those people who keeps corpses, just because I don't know what to do with the pots when an, when a plant dies. So this is. Uh, a rabbit's foot fern. I bought it because I r wanted to try to do some closed terrariums and the closed terrarium didn't survive and this didn't survive and I bought the peperonia, pep, peperonia, peperomia for the closed terrarium and you know clearly that's not doing so hot. <laughs> I'm sorry I just I'm 
<laughs> okay, all right, all right, let's go, let's get back to it. Um, <laughs> so, I bought them for closed dry items, it didn't go well. All the plants that I bought for it died, and the terrarium died, so that was a failed experiment. Maybe someday I'll try to do it again, but who knows. This is a parlor palm that I got at Ikea, and I have not been able to figure out how to make it happy like I put it in higher light I put it in really low light now it's here in like the medium light situation and you know it's been in higher humidity it's been in lower humidity I just don't know what it wants the soil is wet by the way like the soil does not dry out like I know palms want a lot of water and this has been getting water I mean, I don't overwater it. I definitely wait like a super long time. It doesn't get water for weeks, but I, that, that sounds sounds like an oxymoron. When it was in low light, it would go a really long time without watering because it was in low light and it wasn't taking up as much water. So now it's in higher light. I still pay attention to the watering. It's, it's still moist. I'm not watering it. And uh, yeah, so I don't know. We'll see. Maybe this will be like the frond that survives and makes it come back. But yeah, I'm just really sad about this plant. I really wanted a cute little parlor palm too. Um, yeah, let's go real quick and see some of the other plants in the house. Okay, so this is my Congo Rojo that I had in my first plant haul video. Um, it's been doing okay. This leaf that's come out most recently looks pretty decent. Um, I had it outside on the covered porch, and it, but I think because it does get direct sun for like a little bit in the day, it like sunburned or something. So I brought it back inside and it seems to be doing like better in here. Um, yeah, these leaves, still waiting for them to all drop off and hopefully get replaced by newer, better looking leaves. But so far it seems to be surviving. This is one of the few philodendrons, I think one of two, because of the micans, um, that so far has not died in my care. All right, then over here we have, gosh, what is this now? The metaphylum something something. This needs to be watered. Like, I don't know how this grows. It's bone dry. I totally forget to water these because they're in a completely different room. But I had this outside too. And yeah, I don't know. I think it's doing all right. Got that leaf. I did hit, have it near a monstera, so I'm trying to keep an eye on it to make sure that it didn't have any thrips that it caught from the monstera because it's outside because I'm trying to get a thrips infestation under control. Right here by the back door we have an almost dead asparagus fern that I really need to put in something else. Um, this was doing really well for a really long time and then um, I think I just kept forgetting. I gotta finish this on my phone because uh, my camera battery died. Um, well, no, my camera memory card was full. So I'm sorry if the video quality looks different, but um, yeah. So I think I need to repot this one. I think I had it in too low light um, and I think I was also forgetting to water it because it was separate from all my other plants. Actually, you know what? <sighs> Let's put this with my other plants so I don't keep forgetting to water it so it doesn't die. Right here to hide my rabbit's foot fern. That's right, the asparagus fern is going on the shelf of shame. All right, we're in the home stretch here. Stay with me if you're still here. Um, okay, so this is a monstera that I got. Um, where did I get this? I'll put the name on the screen when I remember it because I don't want to take too long to remember it um, but it had thrips so that's why it's out here I'm dealing with the thrips infestation I think it's coming along but I'm scared to bring it back inside so um, but most of the new leaves don't seem to have um, like the markings from thrips so we'll see how that goes I'm gonna keep I'm gonna start treating it with like some sort of 
systemic insecticide just to make sure that it doesn't have any more before I bring it in. But this is the longest I've been able to keep them unsterilized, so that's cool. That is a peace lily that is dying because I just gave up on it. And this is a fern. So this is the, was turned around previously. Sorry, my husband's working on something in the background. This was turned around previously, um, and the other side was getting more light. So I wanted to flip it around so that this side got more light and didn't start keep looking so sad. Um, but it does need a watering. So, but overall, I think it really likes this spot. Um, it's not too hot, not too cold doesn't get any direct light and um, I think this area stays pretty humid so yeah that's um I think that's it oh my goodness you guys I almost forgot to show you this last plant this is a blue star fern um, it's super underwater because it's I think only in cocoa coir or something and I keep forgetting to water it so I'm actually gonna be making a video pretty soon about how to install hydro spikes and this is the one that we're going to be hydro spiking. So this is the before and hopefully it survives for the next plant tour. All right, so that concludes the plant tour. Thank you so much for sticking with me to the end if you have um, and for watching this because I don't know if you're like me if it's a tour you're you're gonna watch it like I don't even know the person most of the time and I'll watch a tour of like their house or their yard or this or that or whatever so anyways I know my plant collection isn't as vast as a lot of other youtubers um, and certainly a lot of these plants aren't like crazy rare I just tend to go towards the more uncommon just because I don't have an unlimited budget and um, I am afraid to kill rare plants. So until I have the attention span and the um, courage to care for a rare plant, I, I don't see myself getting any crazy rare plants in the near future. So um, yeah, comment below if you like my plants or which one you like, or uh, if you want updates on that peperomia that I, um, might be slowly killing. Um, but yeah, anyways, so I'll, I think I'm gonna be doing a yard tour soon because um, if you haven't seen it already, I did a yard tour last year when we first moved in and there has been some progress in the yard. Um, and yeah, so I'm gonna be doing a yard tour this month. Um, so subscribe if you would like to see that. And pretty soon, I'm gonna be getting a raised bed vegetable garden. So if you're into gardening, there's gonna be more gardening videos coming up this summer. So I'm pretty excited about that. And if you wanna see that kind of content, please subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.